Buenos dias, good morning country collectors. As I'm sure you've gathered from the title of this video, we are leaving Mexico for now. It's been a life-changing two years, mm -hmm. and as much as we love and appreciate this country, it's time for us to pack our bags, get back on the road, and collect another country with you, which we'll be revealing in the next video. Oh, the suspense, how could we do that to you? <laughs> but before we move on, we would like to discuss our favorites of Mexico, which is gonna include states, cities, food, mm -hmm. <laughs> beaches, memories, experiences, and much more. In no particular order because that would just be too difficult. It sure would. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. All right, let's jump into this. We sat down and made a little list here, so we're kind of just going to go through them and talk to you about them, you know, whatever just comes to our mind. Starting with top states, like we said, no particular order. I think I want to start out with Oaxaca. Yeah. This is one that was really like our first real jump into Mexican culture, and it is very near and dear to mm -hmm. my heart. It's a state that has everything, yeah. beaches, mountains, culture, food, yeah. <laughs> and pretty much anything else you could want in an experience here in Mexico. So the next one up is Baja California Sur. We're just like blown away. The beaches are beautiful. The people are nice. The San water is beautiful. Yeah, the water is beautiful. San Jose del Cabo, Todos Santos, La Paz. Man. Oh my gosh, Playa Balandro, we'll get into that a bit later. But it was just like something totally different from where we had been. And I mean, the Baja Peninsula in general is just like amazing. It's like its own little country. Yeah, so that was number two. Um, what's the next one? Oh, Quintana Roo. I feel like that's one that a lot of people know because you go to Cancun and, and that's where I think a lot of people's Mexico experiences begin. You go to a wedding, you go there for a, an all-inclusive, but there is so much more to it mm -hmm. as well. And the first time we came to Mexico on our own, that was where we really explored. We rented a car, we drove around, we went to cenotes. We just like, kind of took it all in and yeah. I'm so glad that we did. Isla Mujeres, Isla Holbox, oh. Cazamel, you got Playa del Carmen, you go down to Tulum. So there's just, there's a lot to do in that area. And like you said, it was like our first like little taste of more to Mexico than Cancun. So that really stood out to so us. Right. All right, next one, Michoacan. Uh, I didn't even know that Michoacan was a place before, <laughs> before we went there. Yeah. And I was so surprised. Mm -hmm. We were on the bus and the beauty, the natural beauty, mm -hmm. just like struck me so deeply. And it's I'm those, so like, glad we went. The central states in Mexico, like Oaxaca and Michoacan, Chiapas, they all have that beautiful culture that really stands out and natural landscapes. And I think, yeah, Michoacan, like going to Henizio and just eating all the traditional indigenous food and seeing the dancing. The dancing. Remember those guys, oh, Bienitos? Yeah. yeah, the old man dance, which I'm pretty good at. They kind of do this little <laughs> wiggle waggle on yeah. the thing with their masks on and the hats with the little wavy ribbons on them. It's something yeah. you have to do. And then Jalisco. Wow, Jalisco has everything that we love. It has beaches, it has culture, it has tequila. tequila. <laughs> yeah. Puerto Vallarta. Guadalajara and Tlaquepaque, Lake wow. Chapala, Ajijic. There's a lot going on there. And the torta ahogada. Ahogadas. <laughs> you can drown me in torta ahogadas anytime. And you know, we loved every state, but those are just the ones that really out stick us. out to yeah. us all right next up we'll talk about our top cities that are not going to be beach towns we'll talk about those later okay um first of course mexico city <laughs> this was one that i was actually apprehensive before we went there yeah. we had heard so many terrible stories about it and it was like should we go should we not go i don't know we went and i am so grateful that we made that decision mm -hmm. because it is one of my favorite cities, not just in Mexico, in but the in the world. Yeah, I mean, where we stayed, like Roma and La Candesa is beautiful. The downtown area is really nice. They have what? the second most amount of museums in the world after London. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the architecture, the culture, you can go and see the Sorry, ruins. I'm gonna say it, the food. Yeah, the food, We're of course, the food. oh my and gosh. And we also got, it was really special because we got to experience it with our friends, Ruben and mm -hmm. Laura. We actually spent a whole month there with yeah. them, just wandering the streets and the parks. It, it's, it's something that you have to see. It's almost like stepping into Europe because the statues of David in the parks, the way that the streets are constructed, it's just something that is so special. And if you don't visit Mexico City, I feel like you haven't 
been to the best cities in the world because yeah. it is something that is so special. Yeah, you can tell he's very passionate about it. I am. It. <laughs> I think it's the longest we spent in a city here in Mexico. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then Oaxaca City. The, the rooftop restaurants. When, when the you, food scene. When you wander the streets and the people are playing the accordions, the churches are everywhere. Street the roads food. are those cobblestones. Street food. Sorry. Street food. <laughs> we went to Hamburguesa Row there. It's like 50 hamburger little like stands oh, along so the road good, the best that are so good. But it was also where we really experienced that kindness mm -hmm. of the Mexican people mm -hmm. for the first time. And it was just like every day seeing people dressed in those traditional clothes walking around where it wasn't like part of a show. Yeah. It's how they are. It's who they are. They're immersed in the culture. And, you know, unlike a lot of other places that we've been in the world, you know, like you go and you experience a culture. I feel like in Oaxaca City, you were part of the culture because yeah. the people just embraced you and they would talk to you and just enjoy the time with you. We stayed at our Airbnb yeah. for like a month. Yeah. And, and Claudia, who was hosting us when we left, she hand embroidered me a shirt with a heart on it that I still heart. have. And, so beautiful. And she bought me like just like a shirt from the store because she didn't want me to feel left out. But, but she said that Heidi was her heart. Like how sweet is that? Like who does that? Yeah. I mean, we Aww. got to experience so much there. And mm -hmm. if you're going to pick one city in Mexico, I feel like that could should be at the top of your list. Yeah, we love it there. Next up is Morelia, Michoacan. Morelia blew me out of the water. Yeah, it we, is so beautiful. We went there with really no expectations and when, when we showed up, it was just like, wow, so much culture. Walking down these beautiful cobblestone streets, you're in the parks. Again, the music, mm -hmm. the dancing, there is so much to it. And I feel like every time you turn a corner, there's another amazing thing. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa, that is so beautiful. How did we miss that yesterday when we walked by the same spot? And that just kept happening every single day that we and were that there. Had, I think more historic buildings than like anywhere, you know, Morelos, his house was there. Yeah. And that's where, you know, a lot of the, the independence movers and shakers, they lived there or studied there, or taught there. I mean, I remember the first day we got there, we were walking into the main square and there was this guy, we heard this violin music and he was up, I brought tears to my eyes. He was up on the top of this building playing the electric violin and we walked into the park and it was just filled with vendors and college students and people hanging out and we stayed until the nighttime when they put on this incredible fireworks, fireworks show. right yeah, the over show. the main cathedral there oh, and it was just like it's imprinted in my mind whoa yeah. you know and again something that we had no expectations of in a place where people said it was extremely dangerous so most people avoided it you know that's just another one of those things like you gotta go experience stuff for yourself to really know yeah. it yeah and we walked around at night there mm -hmm. it's busy they have this beautiful aqueduct that runs through the city yeah. there's so many tree-lined streets and yeah. just beautiful things to see you have got to put that one in there too we loved it next up Guanajuato, the most Guanajuato. colorful city. Man. Oh my gosh, that was so unique too. Like when we, we took the bus there and then we got in the taxi and we were driving through and we're just going through those tunnels. Yeah, it's a smaller city. In the valley. You are experiencing so much there. There's so much history. You would walk down on these beautiful streets and people are doing art. They're painting things. There's just, there's so much. And the restaurants were just like abounding wherever we went. Remember the kissing alley? Oh, I do. <laughs> remember that there's some crazy story about like a miner and his rich and the daughter of a rich merchant mm -hmm. and they were kissing and they got caught her father got so angry that he scared her and she fell out and died or he fell out i can't really remember one right of now. them fell yeah. out and died i mean that's sad but you go there now and it's like this place where you can stand on two different balconies right across and you can actually kiss and they'll take a photo for you it's also where they made the enchiladas mineras, mineras. i mean one of my favorite dishes in mexico Those are good enchiladas with potatoes and carrots and chicken mm -hmm. remember how she made it in that like big oh, wok thing of, of course yeah. i mean and again such kind nice people like they wanted to share their culture with you. They mm -hmm. wanted to know that you were enjoying the time there. And what was that thing they had at night there? The guys, they Leyendas, dress up. Uh, like yeah. The legends, they like walk through the streets. And but they sing. dress up like, it looks like they're from like a Shakespearean play or a Renaissance yeah. play. And they go out and they sing songs in the streets and everyone dances and you learn history. It was, it was a really special place as well. Yeah, and then... Last one is Guadalajara, Jalisco. I think these are good contrasts because Guadalajara 
is huge. Mm -hmm. And again, there is no lack for incredible architecture. Like remember when we went down to the plaza and you're just standing there kind of just like your jaw is on the floor looking at the theater and then the cathedral, they're just towering over you. And there's another university there just like in Guanajuato. So there is this like nice younger population that mm -hmm. kind of mixes in with everybody else. They had a great little street food scene in front of a lot of the churches. Yeah, and that's where we went to our first soccer game or a football game. Football. football match. We went and saw Atlas play. That was That, that was a really great experience yeah. here. It's a place I feel like you could go for weeks or months mm -hmm. and not even like scratch the surface mm -hmm. of all the things that you can do there. Yeah. All right. So that wraps it up for the cities. Now we're going to go into top Pueblo Mexico. If you don't know what a Pueblo Mexico is, it's a town that has been denoted by the country of Mexico. It's like a magical town. There's like five different categories that, you know, like really define them, but they are very, very special places. Yeah, they're fun. And there's we, like 132 or something yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, we just loved like checking them out, like hopping from one to the other. But the first one that stands out is Zacatlan de las Manzanas in Puebla. This place is one of my favorite places that we went to in Mexico. Yeah. It's like the most beautiful place that you've never heard of before. It's a small town and it's on a huge canyon, a barranca, barranca, I believe. And it just sits on the canyon so you're overlooking the mountain, the green rolling hills in the distance. And then in the town, it's like, remember the vitro murals? It's a small town that is huge on art yeah. and artisans. Yeah. And it's Zacatlan de las Manzanas because they're known for their apple production. Mm -hmm. So they have, they have this incredible apple fair that we actually didn't get to go to but we heard so much about. But they make every kind of apple product mm -hmm. from wine to foods to whatever you want, mm -hmm. they have it there. And it's it's quaint. Yeah. So when you walk, you're walking along like the edge of the canyon and then they have this glass walkway that goes out over it. So you're walking and looking down into this beautiful valley that is just covered in green with the birds flying below you. And then you look to the left or the right and there's just waterfalls mm -hmm. just pouring down. And you can see like little villages on the edges just kind of in front of you. And we met, we actually met Mary that was responsible for the vitro murals or it's like the, the life murals. Yeah. And they were creating this incredible piece of all of the states in Mexico. And they were like, it's the actual faces of the people mm -hmm. that were Remember important. the guy looked just like you. He did. It was like my twin brother. I still claiming it was me. I was the king of the apple fair that year. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's just such a neat place to go and spend some time and just really get away from it all, mm -hmm. which we really liked. Next one up, Isla Mujeres, which I didn't even know it was a Pueblo Mexico when we went. When we were just looking at the list, we we're like, Isla Mujeres is a Pueblo Mexico? Isla, like, Isla Mujeres holds a super special place in our hearts because it was like the first time that we really left on our own. That's where we went to. We had friends told us about this island that you just had to go to and we're like, okay, whatever. It's a little island off Cancun. How great could it be? Well, it was great. Yeah. Uh, you rent golf carts there and you just drive around this island and you can just stop. They have ruins there with for the goddess Ishel. They have great snorkeling, mm -hmm. tons of restaurants. There's this one long road where you walk down yeah. where they're selling these beautiful handmade crafts and then there's live music going on. We had the churros at Jurassic. Jurassic. <laughs> Park. And it was like my first Mexico pun that like inspired me to be so punny through our times. At least I think I'm punny. And that was what our second video that we made after coming back, you know, full time doing this. So yeah, yeah, it was a great time. If you only have a week, it's like the perfect place to go to. Yes. And the next one is Loreto Baja California Sur. I mean, the whales migrate through mm -hmm. here. It's this tiny little town with a beautiful malecon that you can walk down. Mm -hmm. The whole town is very, very walkable. Mm -hmm. And I think the most special part, it was that natural beauty. Our Airbnb host, her son-in-law, Eric. Hi, Eric. Super <laughs> nice guy. If you ever go there, definitely take his tour on the mm -hmm. Trace Chiles. Yeah. He took us out to Isla Coronado. And it's one of the most beautiful island experiences, I think, that we've ever had. Just on the way out, we saw a pot, this huge pot of dolphins. And then another pot of dolphins. dolphins. Yeah. And then another pot of dolphins. And then you go around the island and there were sea lions and blue-footed boobies. It honestly felt like a little Galapagos. It, it was did. So we unique. got to go snorkeling there. Mm -hmm. It was so nice. And then he took us into this little cove where he whipped us up some yellowfin sashimi that he had caught the day before. Uh, and oh, then, then we walked around by this little it. like volcano and then he took us to a beach all on our own. The yeah. water 
is pristine, indescribably blue. Mm -hmm. Like when I say beautiful, that doesn't even do it justice. Yeah. It was just like one of the most perfect scenes. Just looked like it went on forever. Natural beauty, definitely. And then yeah, the center of town. It's just really nice and quaint. On Saturdays they have a little open air market there where oh, you yeah. can get some goods from the locals, which always support local. And, and then, these little walking paths with the trees that like oh yeah, they like go tunnels. over them. These tunnels that are really nice. It's really unique. And then if you have a car, or rent a car, you can do a day trip to the mission San Francisco Javier. So much fun. The next one up is San Pedro Tlaquepaque, Jalisco. If you're visiting Guadalajara, you have to check this place out as it's only like, what, a 10, 15 minute drive from the center? It's actually a magical town yeah. that is in the city limits, like the yeah. greater metropolitan area of Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. It's like one main street that kind of runs through the town. And if you're looking for any kind of handicraft, this yeah. is the place that you want to go. <laughs> right. Furniture, clothes. Pottery. They have these restaurants. We tried um, polke there for the first oh, yeah, time. We did. That was very interesting. Yeah. It's made from agave nectar. Definitely try it out it's if you're in Mexico. Beverage, we yeah. also had these cool little ice cream things that we'd seen everywhere else, but this was the first time we tried them. About halfway down the road, you get to El Parian, which is actually the largest cantina in the world. It's all of these restaurants that are kind of in this complex. And in the center is this raised stage where mariachi just plays all day long. Jalisco is where mariachi was born. So you hear it everywhere. It's really nice. And they have papel picado strung up. And I think when we were there, was it Valentine's Day? It was Valentine's Day. Day. So there were like huge hearts yeah. all around. Yeah. It, it was it was just like a beautiful mm -hmm. place. And I definitely recommend it. You, you will notice these giant statues statues when you're walking down the street, which are great for some picture opportunities, yeah. as well as these little chubby guys riding bicycles that you can hop on the back of the bike with. I fit right in. Yeah, the little gordos. I think Rotopadia. Rotopadias, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, really cute. So yeah, we definitely recommend that Pueblo Mexico. And the last one on the list is San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas, which was just like unlike any other you know chiapas is the poorest state in mexico oh, no. but it's probably the richest state when it comes to culture, culture yeah um walking around the town you are going to notice there are so many indigenous groups that actually mm -hmm. come down from the mountains to sell their goods and stuff mm -hmm. they dress completely differently yeah. they live a different kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. but they all come down and converge together here in this town which is also very beautiful it's surrounded by mountains yeah the climate was a lot different than a lot of the places we went it was very cool we, i remember we had to buy some clothing there because it was got quite chilly we did the the central park area is so cool to go and hang out in we actually met batman there <laughs> yeah that was really fun it was also the festival for the virgin de guadalupe we were there right before christmas Christmas. People yeah. from all over the state will actually walk or run. Mm -hmm. They hold a little torch. It's like the Olympics and they keep it lit the entire time. They get there and they climb like 200 steps up to this church that's on the top of the hill and they go in and they light the torch and they get on their knees and they go up to the front to pay respect, respect yeah. to the Virgin de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And then all day long, there's just fireworks going off. The, the big day we were there, they set this gunpowder down the middle of the road with little explosives in the middle of it. I almost went deaf. Like, yeah, so it's exploding. People are running in all the different directions. It was a cool experience for sure. The carnival, we wouldn't remember. We oh yeah, that the... was so much fun. Going to the carnival, we went in the Ferris, Ferris wheel. wheel. Yeah. It, it was a really cool place. And it's like the jumping off point to go to... Sumadero Canyon. Palenque, yeah. the Aguas Azul, some of the most beautiful waterfalls I think I've ever seen. Yes. So if you're looking for some culture and also want yeah, to go explore some more natural beauty, Chiapas is definitely the place. For and sure. San Cristobal well is the spot well all right next up we got our beach down oh man my favorite <laughs> I, if you didn't know we are beach babies and we couldn't just pick five like so some of them we picked just a region starting with the riviera maya cancun isla mujeres cazamel isla holbash puerto morelos those are all in quintana Roo. Next region, the Oaxacan coast. We started out in Puerto Escondido. It's it's a surf town. They like from I think in November and a couple other months of the year, they get 30 foot waves there. It's world-class surfing, so you need to be careful yes. if you are gonna go down, but 
it to go in the water, but you know what? It's a great place to go out in the morning and watch people surf. We made one of our first videos there. It was like big wave surfing. Oh, it's funny. Go back and watch those. They're hilarious. They, they are. It just has a really nice laid back vibe there too. And the beaches are so wide and long that you can be with people or be by yourself. But other than Puerto Escondido, I mean, there's Zipolite, which is the only the new, new beach. beach. There's Mazunte, which is another very laid back area. Huatulco, which is one of those destinations that was built by Fonatur as a resort town there in Mexico. All right, next, another region, Baja California Sur. We kind of already pointed out these places, so I'll go kind of quick, but La Paz. One of our, yeah, yeah one of the, I think one the of the Malacon. coolest beach cities that you can go to, the yeah. Malacon comes alive. It's alive during the day, but at night, mm -hmm. everyone's out, they're riding like little sit down bicycles, skateboarding. They have these beautiful sculptures mm -hmm. all along. Great restaurants. And so then if you have a, a car, brewery. you can go to Playa Balandra. Oh my gosh. Maybe one of the most beautiful beaches we've ever, well, one of the most beautiful beaches we've ever been to in the world. It's, the the bluest water, yeah. the, the sand speechless. is incredible. Speechless. Yeah. We went there with our friends Richard and Michael yeah. that took us. We met so many wonderful people yeah. in Mexico. We really we're did. Lucky. And we're it made the experience so much more enriching because mm -hmm. if you keep yourselves open, you can do stuff like that. You can meet people. You can have these experiences. Remember at Playa Blondra, we like swam across and went snorkeling. And then you climbed that thing and then you, I rolled, you rolled down. down the sand. I felt pretty <laughs> sick afterwards. <laughs> But it was it he was did really that for cool. You. I did I did do that for you guys. And then ooh, San Jose del Cabo, Cabo San Lucas, Loreto. Well, Cabo San Lucas is like that tourist destination, and it's yeah. a tourist they destination for a reason. We did that cool climb with all the dogs oh, there. Yeah. We went to Canary Beach. We had some incredible views. Again, nice Malicón to walk down. The sea mm -hmm. lions actually jump out of the water and get on the back mm -hmm. of boats. And we went to that really cool brew, Baja Brewery there. Oh yes, where we Baja watched the sun. Sunset, had some great food and then right next door it's like the other Cabo that nobody talks about but San it, Jose del Cabo it's like the artsy side it's more relaxed and laid they back. They do markets on, on Thursdays Thursdays I think. they have an art walk there and there's nice beaches around as well great restaurants it's just yeah like the other side you know. And we had some good churros there too. <laughs> he remembers every churro he's <laughs> ever had and then going north a bit more Bahia Concepcion and Mulahe Wow, that's where we stayed on the sailboat. With, what an experience. Oh gosh, I know. And the drive, like I, I feel like there's probably ways to get there by bus, but if you can rent a car, if you can afford to rent a car, the drive is so incredible. Mm -hmm. it, the, the coastline you're driving down, it's just beach after beach of pristine nature. If you're looking for a road trip, I think the Baja Peninsula is where it's at, for sure. For sure. And then you go into Mulahe and it's this desert oasis. Yeah. Just in the middle of the desert, there are all these date palms that just mm -hmm. go on forever to the mountains. Yeah, every turn we made in Mexico just surprised us. As you can see, we're super passionate about this country. For sure. Yeah. All right, I'm next. I'm even wearing it on my chest. Me too. Hey. Next up, Siwa and Ixapa. This is in the state of Guerrero. Guerrero. <laughs> so you've probably heard the name See what the nail before, and that's for a good reason. One of the, my favorite movies of all time is Shawshank Redemption, mm -hmm. and that's where Andrew Dufresne talks about going, where the the Pacific is the bluest you'll ever see, and that's where Red goes down and meets him when he comes out, and he's working on the beach, mm -hmm. just on like the on the boat. I think that's actually filmed in like the Virgin Islands. Uh, or yeah, something. it's definitely but... filmed someplace else, but. It I know was, why he he would go to why they would go there because it's just this beautiful escape. On Sundays Amelia, in the yeah. main square they would have all the families would come down and the locals would perform dances, sing music. It's like a talent show. Yeah, it was like this talent show that everyone came down to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful walking along the beach there and they had a bunch of different beaches. It's known for its fishing. Mm -hmm. So if you're into fishing, it's a great place to go. We went to the Playas La Gatos where you take a little ferry ride Gatos. over to the other side and you're just living that like deserted beach life that yeah. is so it seems, nice. Because you have to take a boat over, it seems like you're going to an island, but then you get there and you see, oh, I'm just across, you know, the bay here. But yeah, just a beautiful place again. Go there, go to one of the restaurants, you can have some seafood or whatever you want for lunch and just lazily lay or stroll on the beach. It's beautiful. And then you can walk back to the, the town area along the beach there. And right next door is Ishtapa. Ishtapa is 
is like the resort town there, which is like sort of a Cancun, but I think Different. a little more laid yeah. back. They have this mm -hmm. great bike trail that goes down the middle of it. Mm -hmm. You can ride uh, your, your bikes out and see like crocodiles mm -hmm. on this little area reserve. And there's another island called Isla Ixtapa there where we went and met Cuba, yeah. our waiter, oh, yeah. and he took care of us. They have beach bunnies. Literally beach bunnies, these little bunnies I that just about that. live and like hop around under your feet while you're having this giant pineapple drink and then you go snorkeling and walk around. That pineapple drink. <laughs> it was very, it was like this face. It was a mouse. Yeah. And then Mazatlan, Sinaloa. We know like when we hear the word Sinaloa, we know what you think, what comes to mind. And it's not always good things. And so we were a little nervous to go there. It was one of those states that people had told us to really avoid. But we went there and we were like, okay, like this is really nice. We only went to Mazatlan, but so that's all we can really talk about. But, but it was it, it's it's, cool. it's so unique, mm -hmm. the experience there, because I feel like a lot of times beach towns don't have a ton of culture associated with them. When you go to Mazatlan, there is culture. There is this history there, and Pedro Infante used to live there, The one of the most famous Mexican musicians and actors. We yeah. were actually there for our second Dia de Muertos. It wasn't the same celebration we had in Oaxaca, but they had a parade that was mm -hmm. very cool. And, and I mentioned it has the longest malecon slash walkway in the world, supposedly. So some people say. Some yeah. people argue it doesn't, but you could walk it for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> it was like being in Las Vegas, like you're on the strip, like you're like, oh, our place is just right there. And it's an hour and a half later. We're like, why didn't we hop in a taxi? <laughs> yeah. And they have these really cool taxis there. Pulmonias. Pulmonias. Yeah. Pulmonias. Yeah. They are some of the most unique transportation that we took in Mexico. They're like golf carts on steroids. Yeah, they're cute. But and they have the old town that is very rich like historic and then you can walk down and then it that brings you to the golden zone that's where the hotels are the big hotels and then a little bit further you know you can go back go up and it's more residential right in Cerritos mm -hmm. and we also got to go to a baseball game that was the Venados. so cool yeah they had the most hilarious uh, mascots that you've ever seen and it was like one of those affordable activities that you could do where like the food, they had sushi for sale. They had beers for two dollars. Mm -hmm. Like everything was, Front it was row so seats nice. Were like five or seven dollars, I think. Yeah, and the yeah. Venados won. Go Venados! Yeah, and they go like this. Go Venados! And we got to meet Luis and Julie, who are some of our very close friends now. We met Billy and Mark there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hi, you guys. Hope hey guys. you're doing well. And the last beach town is Puerto Vallarta in Jalisco, and we're gonna talk about Yalapa as well. Puerto Vallarta was. I don't know what we were expecting when we went there, but. I really enjoyed it. As you walk down the beach, they had lots of statues mm -hmm. and stuff along the Malicón. They would put on performances at night. Mm -hmm. Oysters on the beach. We, we had those cool mango flowers. We, we were just experiencing some of the best pastor. We stood in line to oh get this pastor. Gosh. They were like giant pastor that was so delicious. What was delicious. the name of that place? How could we forget? And the margaritas we had like, we shared one, right? Mm -hmm. And we were like, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> they even gave us a little to-go cup when we left. We had, we met this really cool uh, freestyle rapper there who wrote us a country collector. Manny. Manny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. He had his his little his little speaker. He's like, yo yo yo, the country collector, and just like wrote this whole song about traveling around these, the world on the spot. I love how all these memories are just like popping back in. And remember, we also hiked up to the viewpoint where we got to see like. It, yeah, it's the best view of Absolutely. Puerto Vallarta. And we got to do it with my friend Kyle, too, who I hadn't hey, seen Kyle. since high school, which yeah. is really nice. Bumped into him there. It was such a cool experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a great time. And then we got up in the morning and we, we took a bus that over to Boca the port. Tomotan? Yeah. Yeah. And then from there we took a boat to Yalapa. When you get there, you know, you get off the boat and it's just this beautiful like little beach and you walk up, you can go to the waterfall. The waterfall was cool. We met the pie lady there. Oh yeah, made we made some, some delicious pie. pies, but you walk around there. It was beautiful and it was very relaxed. So like you have the busy town of Puerto Vallarta and then just around the corner is this very quiet, relaxed mm -hmm. place where they have nice hotels you can stay in. Yeah. We saw whales on the way. Oh, yeah, it was whaley cool. Yeah, I had was. to throw that in there, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, just a nice little escape from that area, the busy city area. All right, what do we have up next? Do you think it's food? I think I it's hope time so. for food. <laughs> I hope so. Top food. Yes! And you know what's number one for him. The, I'm gonna say it wrong, the Marquisita. 
Oh my God. Yes, I knew it's always Marquesita, Marquesita. These, no, th these Marquesita. were Marquesita. Marquesita. <laughs> these were born in the Yucatan Peninsula mm -hmm. and you can find them all over Mexico, but they're like this thin layer of waffle batter that they put down and you can get any kind of savory or sweet flavor mm -hmm. put inside of it. They love putting cheese in it, whether it's cream cheese cream or cheese. or like shaved cheese yeah. as well. Then they roll them up and then they put like a smear of chocolate or whipped cream or whatever on the outside and you just have this like giant delicious thing in your hand that's crunchy and hot and I told I Adam just if we them. ever go home he should start get like a food truck yes. a, mar a marquisita food truck would you guys come to my mar marquisita food truck <laughs> you know he would load those up mm -hmm. <laughs> probably I would, would also weigh like 900 pounds <laughs> yeah you would <laughs> come on you can't dig into your own stash that's right next up is tacos el pastor another one of Adam's <sighs> absolute favorites and I think it was really fun because throughout Mexico. You know, you could find it pretty much ev everywhere that we were. First time we had it was in Isla Mujeres and it just like got me going and- I was hooked. I was hooked. <laughs> I can't get enough Pastor. Adam ran on Pastor and Marquesitas for like the first couple months we were here. Mm -hmm. First couple of years. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. <laughs> Next up, one of my top foods that we had were uchepos mm. and we got to try them first in Morelia, Michoacan. I'm not a huge tamal fan, like I don't love tamales, but I really liked these. They were like I don't know they were shaped like this and they were made of sweet corn and they were a little more like cornbread they weren't super dense they were more fluffy and they had just this delicious sauce on them mm, they were oh, so good like little pillows in too. your mouth mm -hmm. yeah i love those and then mole Come wow on. so that, this takes us back to oaxaca mm -hmm. they they were they have seven moles there some places even had like five-year mole where they would just keep or taking longer. a little bit yeah. of that mole and putting it into the next and the next mm -hmm. and the next it was like a generational just building on it i think there's like 23 year mole 23 years or at, something it, and the flavor is just so unique mm -hmm. yeah that was definitely one of our favorite dishes just trying all the different ones it was really nice you know and that's something that's so important when you are traveling like obviously you know when i came to Mexico I thought that Mexican food was tacos and burritos yeah. they don't even have hard tacos in Mexico not well, like we have them they have the tacos dorados which are like, like these little twisty up. twisty things with a little bit inside mm -hmm. they, they don't have the shells that yeah. we're, we're so used to back in the states mm -hmm. it's all like handmade soft tortillas that they pack with food mm -hmm. and you know you have to be open to trying them. Maybe you're not gonna like it, but maybe you're gonna find your new favorite food in the world. Mm -hmm. So just keep that mind and that mouth open and just enjoy. Don't forget to jump in. You know, he's always got that mouth open. <laughs> he's always ready. <laughs> Next one, chilaquiles is his again, his oh, favorite. Man. Do not compare these to breakfast nachos. People do not like that. <laughs> and and they're not breakfast but nachos. No. Like I, I think one of the one of like our big like light bulb moments here was tortilla chips are tortillas, tortillas like the tortillas that tortillas. they make that they cut into triangles and then fry, and then fry. it's like that makes sense Ding. so as they do it i'm like she's making tor tortilla chips yeah well they take these fresh tortilla chips they put cheese on them with chicken or steak or sausage huevo and egg wait oh man if you get it like a poached egg and it kind of like drips down onto it. So delicious, but they also do them with moles on them. A lot of the times it's just like salsa verde or salsa rojo. Yeah. I always go verde. That's just me. I'm a green guy. I love the green sauce too. Go green, go white. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> And last one, it's not a food, but it's a it's a bevy. Oh, <laughs> mezcal. mezcal. Wow, I'm putting that in the food category. I don't care. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those beautiful things that I, I was so surprised by. Like, I, it's not just another tequila. It's a whole different beverage. Tequila comes from blue agave. Mezcal comes from any type of agave, including blue agave. Mm -hmm. And it has this beautiful, smoky kind of flavor. Yeah. People actually make their own mezcals all over Mexico. And, and I like it because there's different like with tequilas you get like young ones wait reposado and añejos and the same goes for mezcal you get like joven you know espadín the different types of agave they come from they all have different flavors so like when you drink beer do a beer flight you can do a mezcal tasting and it's just it's really unique and fun and they have like sayings for everything bad mezcal for everything good mezcal and if there's no solution or remedy one liter and a half but if the pain is by the heart with more reason. Cheers. Mezcal makes you magical. Like, you don't get drunk, 
you feel the magic of the mezcal. I actually went to a few places where we saw them making the mezcal, walked around in the fields, and it's just, it's something that you should give a chance to if you drink when you're here in Mexico. Yeah, I think after we left Oaxaca, half our blood was mezcal. <laughs> oh, definitely. And they serve it with this very cool, it's called sal de gusano. Mm -hmm. They actually take the agave worms and they dry them out and they grind them, and then they, they put them with orange wedges oh, yeah. that you get, and it has this very unique kind mm -hmm. of flavor. And you're supposed to drink it with a beer, right? Like yep. you see most people that have a beer and then a shot of mezcal as well. It's and you just cool. sip it. You don't take a shot of it, which what, that's what we learned, right? Back home, tequila, we're just t putting them back. But here we learned that you're supposed to sip your beverages, enjoy that. We had so much more food that we enjoyed too, like sopes, enchiladas. You know, every state just had something for us. We can't get to them all. But. Oh man, where we go? We actually had a burrito that was wrapped in cheese. They didn't put a tortilla. They fried cheese yeah. and then wrapped this incredible meat in oh. it. Wow, mind blowing. All right, top experiences other than eating that cheese burrito. <laughs> mm, man, I can't stop one, thinking about it now. <laughs> Dia de los Muertos in Oaxaca. It's always been a dream of mine to go to Dia de los Muertos. And don't make the mistake of saying it's Mexican Halloween because you are completely mm -hmm. wrong. It is this beautiful tradition that is about your ancestors, the people that have passed on in your family, their spirits coming back and spending time with you. I'm getting chills just talking about it. Yeah, when we did it, remember we went, we did some experiences with Cultural Unlimited and we got to go out to Tia Lancha's house where she, you know, taught us how to make tortillas and then we had tamales and we built our own ofrenda, which is the altar. And we went and we cut the flowers in the fields. And before that, we went to the market and we gathered all the supplies for the ofrenda. It, so we got yeah. to learn about the entire you know what families do to prepare for and, their and every ancestors. family has their own altar and the people that they, they have their faces painted we did as well which was very cool and the, you know the people they dress in these beautiful clothes especially yeah. in Oaxaca there's parades in the streets we actually went to with that same company that you were mm -hmm. talking the cultural experience we went to another town where they had this like band battle. Yeah, that of, was funny. It was one of the coolest things and so funny. They, they were just out there. There were tubas that had pyrotechnic shooting mm -hmm. out of them. People were dressed up, they were playing music and we actually went back to this guy's house afterwards and everybody Party. from the town yeah. showed up dancing, singing, just really embracing mm -hmm. the experience because it's not Halloween. It's about you celebrating life. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the coolest things I think we experience in all of Mexico. All right, next, swimming with whale sharks in Isla Mujeres. <sighs> Man, yeah. I, I, I've been a scuba diving instructor for 25 years. I've, I've swam with some whale sharks. I've seen some incredible stuff underwater. We went on this experience and there were a hundred whale so sharks many. Like we didn't the count water. them, but there, was, there were a lot. The captain said there were a hundred. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't just whale sharks, it was mantas. these mantas swimming around. Turtles, we saw dolphins. dolphins and every time we, Heidi almost got swallowed by a whale shark. I mean, yeah. she wouldn't have you know eaten no. her, but it was swimming by our guide. Pull Adolfo, hey Adolfo, hey. pulled her out of the way at the last sec. It, I cry when I watch the video because it was one of the most beautiful and unique experiences and to share mm -hmm. with you at home, it's it's so beautiful to see these animals. They're the size of a school bus. Yeah, and it wasn't an easy feat getting out there. I think it was like 22 miles out to sea. It took a couple hours, mm -hmm. right? And the seas were quite choppy. So if you're gonna do this, just know that like, yeah, you gotta be prepared. Maybe take some seasick pills, you know, so you take them before you go. Yeah. Don't be a hero. Just yeah. take the pills. But definitely, I mean, an experience that we'll never forget. Next up is the Jose Cuervo tequila train in Jalisco. Wow, wow, wow. Talk about a yeah. unique experience. It starts in Guadalajara. You board the Jose Cuervo Express and right away the tequila starts flowing. You get this Tasting. Unlimited tequila. Yeah, and then you can drink as much as you want. They give you some food and you enjoy some music. The entire ride there goes through these incredible landscapes of agave mm -hmm. fields. When you pull into town, the mariachi bands are just waiting outside yeah. with the music what a going. Welcome. And then you get there and you get to tour the Jose Cuervo facility, the factory, and learn all about the process of this unique beverage. I love seeing how like they roast them in yeah. these giant ovens. The agave it was, hearts. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. And then we actually went into like the heart of tequila. Mm -hmm. People are dancing, singing, drinking cantoritos. Yeah. It was just a fun, mm -hmm. fun day. And
and at the end we even got to go to the agave fields and we saw a himador, himador. they're hero not all heroes wear capes people yeah. the himador with his little hat on he just cut up the agave hearts for us right yeah, there harvested and then them. we all did some line dancing <laughs> it was really fun yeah and we actually left standing straight up so. we did we were responsible <laughs> yeah next up oh we just did this the off-roading the desert racing in san felipe baja california with desert adventure tours so cool carrie and kayla hi hey guys <laughs> they took us out into the desert where we got to see the valley of the giants mm -hmm. they are the biggest cacti in the world 70 feet tall and some say about 500 years old yeah it was incredible you know you're just looking up at them just like wow <laughs> this is interesting and getting out there you're just like racing yeah. through the desert it was so cool we were strapped in real yeah. tight we had these little bandanas on we were gonna rob a train yeah. it was fun very unique experience definitely a lot of fun put it on the list next one one of my favorite times that we had was staying on that sailboat in mulahe in bahia concepcion off of playa boro and i think the best part was our host sylvia and carl and carl <laughs> yeah. sorry carl we didn't forget about you <laughs> They were the sweetest couple and they have this sailboat that they actually sail on but they yeah. rent out as an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. They gave us our own dinghy and we would go out and just explore the islands, yeah. enjoy ourselves. Sleeping on the boat was so cool and we went out for margaritas and saw an incredible sunset with Sylvia. And she also taught us how to clam which was cool. So That was a cool so experience. So we could you know catch our own food. There's a there's a fishing pole on the boat so Adam caught a fish. He I put did. it back but yeah it was just it was just fun another really nice cool activity. and unique very unique yeah next up hot air ballooning over wow. Teotihuacan again thank you to our friends Laura and Ruben this was actually a gift to us yeah. for Christmas birthdays they were so, so wonderful sweet. we got to go with Ruben mm -hmm. we left at like 4 a.m. or something yeah, it was quite early you get there before the Sun comes up right outside of where the ruins are and they're just filling hot air balloons and we had like our own little compartment in the hot air balloon it goes up you're over the city there's balloons all around as the Sun is rising and then then you look down and there are these incredible ruins mm -hmm. that are one of the biggest mysteries from Mexico, mm -hmm. I think. It was just so beautiful. And then we may have had a little bit of the a- The landing was- We may have hit yeah. a tree or two. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> us like sliding <laughs> and then riding back in the back of the truck yeah. in the, the basket. Yeah, then the, we also the did the point. champagne toast. Oh, that was fun. When we landed, which is really nice. And I, again, another very unique mm -hmm. experience. Then we went and saw the ruins, which were beautiful. Oh, and then with Lauren Rubin, we also got to go to Gruta de Tolentongo in Hidalgo. Mind blowing. These like beautiful blue hot springs mm -hmm. that just flow out of the side of this mountain down into this valley. Yeah. We had such a wonderful time. I wish you did a lot with them. We even went yeah. and saw the Lucha Libres we, yeah. we, when we were in Mexico City, yeah. which Lucha was Libre. so cool too. They were mm -hmm. doing flips off the, <laughs> yeah. the turnbuckles and stuff. And then Homun. We can't forget when we went to Homun in the state of Yucatan with Sammy hey Sammy I think a lot of these experiences were while we're on people right it's that's life life it's it's you know, a lot of the memories, the good memories that you remember are made because it's the people that you were with mm -hmm. or you did them with. But we went to Homun, that is like the cenote capital of Mexico, and Sammy ended up being our guide. He ended up working out really well. He spoke perfect English. He took us to all of the, they have like... So many, 40? Yeah, 40 or 50, yeah. and they're discovering them yeah. still at, yeah. like at this present time. Mm -hmm. he, t he did this incredible jump like 40 or 50 yeah. feet down into one of the cenotes. I was impressed. Sammy, you are the man. Yeah, we miss you and we hope you're doing well. And, and we still stay in contact with him we too, do. which is nice. He's so nice. And the last one, we mentioned it slightly before, yeah. it was releasing sea turtles. We got to do it a few times and it is such in a Puerto special Escondido. experience, mm -hmm. you know, having this tiny little perfect turtle. They were in Hakar coconut. in Hakaras. They're they're these oh, little yeah. these little they look like coconut shells. They're actually like a traditional bowl that mm -hmm. was used here in Mexico. A little bit of sand in it and they give you your tiny little perfect turtle and we name them. Yeah. And then you go down and there's a line and you just kind of like let them go and cheer them on as they go down into the sea to be free yeah. out in the ocean. Only like one out of a thousand and actually survive to adulthood, but hey, ours could have. Ours Josh definitely and did. Josh and Winston, they're out there <laughs> holding their little flippers together right now, swimming through the ocean. We can dream. We can. <laughs> 
Well, I hope you enjoyed our experiences. We have so many memories already from this journey and I just feel so blessed. And you know, like we did mention cities, beaches. Those were just the tip of the iceberg, the ones that came off the it, top of our It took our us a while to narrow it down yeah. to just these because we really so have cute. had only positive and wonderful mm. experiences since we've been to Mexico for two years. Yeah, yeah, really just the Xochimilco one was honestly our only bad experience. Yeah, everything like, else has just been so wonderful. I remember one time a guy like, he took 20 more pesos than something should have been and that was it on one bus he was ride. supposed to give us change and he got up the bus and left and we were like yeah. well it happened yeah. sometimes and i'm sure you know some stuff we just didn't see or we were charged extra here and there but like yeah it's it's amazing to be someplace this long to have only very positive you know memories yeah. and experiences that we are gonna like heidi said carry with us yeah. forever yes but we wanted to just talk about a bit more stuff. We had this question, what surprised us about Mexico? And I'll say just it's d diversity. You know, at, we talk to people and we tell them like every state here in Mexico is different. It's like the United States, right? Alabama and Alaska are totally different. Same here, Chiapas and Baja California, totally different from the people, the culture, the food, the music, the landscape. Like it, it'll just blow you away. And I'll be honest, when we came here, we didn't know there were 32 states. Like we just thought Mexico was Mexico. Mexico. Oh, we're in Mexico. Because back home, we're not taught about our beautiful neighbor here, which is such a shame. Yeah, it really is a travesty. Yeah, so I think like the diversity just, you know, it blew me away and it still does to this day. For sure. I think for me, it was, you know, I, we've been all over the world together. I traveled before I met Heidi and Mexico was always like on the back burner. It was like, maybe when I get old, I'll, I'll go to Mexico. Mexico is just Cancun. Mexico is just this party place. And Mexico opened my eyes to the fact that I need to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. I need to be willing to have these experiences because if I wasn't, we would have missed out on one of the most beautiful countries cultures and countries that I've ever experienced in the entire mm -hmm. world. And I was not expecting it. And I am so grateful for it because mm -hmm. it, it's changed me, mm -hmm. you know, being here and, and the people are so kind. You know, I feel like at home we have a Mexican culture where it's separate from us. We're not like, it's like Americans and Mexicans. When you're here, the Mexicans accept us. Like we're Mexicans, as long as you're nice to them, as long as you respect, respect. them. Respect is huge. As long as you smile at them and treat them with the respect that you want to be treated with, you're part of their family. Yeah. And people tell us that all the time. And that's what surprised me the most about Mexico is they embraced us like we yeah. were Mexicans. And I, that's what I love, like the pride here. You know, it doesn't seem as divided as back home. Like there is a unity here that we have never seen. And when speaking, like Adam was just talking about like, the family unit is so important here as well and community a lot of people you need each other you lean on your neighbor for help and it's just lean on me anytime. yeah but it's just it's such a beautiful thing and i've it's definitely made me realize just how important family is you know god is very important to them as well and having the, your faith and i think that's a beautiful thing and i think it it keeps community together i think back home we've shifted to this more like individualism. Yeah. So like, it's like, all right, well you grow up and now you're on your own. You do this and you do that, but you do it on your own because that's what success is. What happened to us helping each other and building each other up and being successful together? For sure. And I think here, a lot of people, you know, they, they lend their hand to you and they want to help you because they need your help too. And they realize like we can grow together. Absolutely which is just a, a big lesson. But I think just the main thing is if you can travel, please travel, get out there because it'll open your mind, change your perspectives. It'll humble you to your core. Even if it's just to the next town over or the next state, if you can't get away to Mexico or a different country, you don't have a passport, just go someplace and see something new. Mm -hmm. Go out and say hi to somebody, start a conversation. It'll make you a better person. And I think that kind of leads into the next thing. Like what did we learn from Mexico? Well. Mexico has taught us so much, as you can see, even after traveling a lot of the world, it's just, I think doing this YouTube channel and doing research has really like, 
you know, learning all of the history has been so enriching. So I think that's kind of drawn us even closer to a country than we've ever been to. Um, but something else that I've learned that goes even further than that is just how, you know, if you didn't know, my sister passed away in March of 2021. It's almost going to be two wow. years. I know. It's crazy. So when we started our channel in June of that same year, you know, I was still reeling from that loss and that trauma. And honestly, I was completely broken. Like, you couldn't see it in the videos because you know we were making videos we were having fun but behind the scenes i was angry and i was sad and i was really reeling from the loss and the trauma and i can thank mexico for healing me like it's given me the patience and the space and the opportunity to go through all of those feelings it's i've you know, I've stepped up the ladder and I've crashed back down and it's really been there just with open arms and so welcoming like we said the smiles of the people and the landscapes just the entire feeling here has just allowed me to heal and I can say like I have healed and I am doing so much better and you know like Dia de Muertos like we talked about it just like put into perspective more what loss is to me and what it means to me and now I carry my sister with me everywhere I go she I know she's here with me enjoying all of our travels with us and so I couldn't there's no way for me to really give my thanks because this country has done so much for me but just yeah thank you so so much for allowing me to heal and grow and become the woman i am today because without you yeah i don't know where i'd be you're quite a woman <laughs> thank you you know i think mexico helped to heal me as well I think especially after covid i think that you know mexico kept its borders open when the entire world was shut down and you know they took different kinds of precautions but fear wasn't the first thing that you felt when you were here and you know i think that it helped me to grow into a better person we tra we've traveled before and i think that traveling has changed our perspectives or expanded our horizons but i think mexico is one of the first places that has truly changed my heart and it's because of that openness, that culture, the history, and the acceptance. Because I think a lot of the times you go someplace and you're a tourist experiencing things in that country. Whereas in Mexico, I feel like I'm part of Mexico and I feel like Mexico is part of me. And when I wear this, this Mexico shirt, it feels like it's in my heart. And I'm so proud to be here and proud that they allowed me to share in their beautiful culture. And all I can say is muchas gracias from the bottom of my heart to all of Mexico, mm -hmm. its people, its culture, its landscapes, its nature, its food, its music. You've made me a better person. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> she needed it no. for me. No, you're wonderful. But yeah, I think that's it. I mean, you know, we are planning on coming back here. So we did write down some places or experiences that we want to come back and do. And definitely Tren Chepe in Chihuahua. I want to go to Chihuahua, this state, so, so bad. So that's at the top of the list. Uh, Huasteca Potosina in San Luis Potosi. We that's, I even planned that whole video to go there, but unfortunately it was the rainy season, so we didn't end up going. The butterfly migration in Michoacan, yeah. millions yeah. of butterflies migrate Mo down from Monarch Canada. Butterflies. Monarch butterflies, mm -hmm. so beautiful. I want to go to Monterey and see that city and also to Sonora and eat some great meat over mm, there. Sounds <laughs> yeah, good. And, and there's out. so much more yeah, too. Yeah, there really is. So. Yeah, thank you. I It's so sad saying goodbye, it really but it's is. not goodbye. It's see you later. It's hasta luego, you know, it's not adi adios. No. We're definitely going to see you again. If it's not soon, it'll be later, but it'll be again. I don't think it could ever be adios because honestly, you are going to be in my heart. I'm talking to Mexico right now. You are going to be in my heart for the rest of my life and I will carry you and your lessons and your beauty. Sorry. <laughs> I've also never been so emotional about a place I've ever been to, yeah. but you're going to be with me forever. And, and I cannot thank you enough for yeah. 
for making me the man that I am today. So, muchas yeah. gracias. Yeah, and thank you just, yeah, again, for having us and allowing us to be here and to grow and for watching us grow. Yeah, for being the, just being someone to lean on for all of the, the countrymen here in Mexico and women who have supported us and just applauded us and, you know, kind of pushed us to keep going and to keep doing this and all of you at home who have done the same, so. <laughs> And, and we, we genuinely hope that you choose to come with us as yeah. we collect more countries around mm -hmm. the world. We hope that you want to be part of this journey because yeah. we love having you in mm -hmm. our community and it really wouldn't be anywhere near as much fun if you weren't here to share it with because it enriches our experience every day. Your comments, your likes, mm -hmm. the way that you communicate with us. It's just, it's so much of our experience that we never even knew was important before. But yeah. if you don't want to come, we understand, yeah, but please do. Yeah. Because you are so important to the experience. And we think a lot of the countries that we're going to go to, you're going to enjoy as well. Absolutely. So thank you again, Mexico. We love you so much. And we will see you in our next country. Hasta luego.